I have 10 ridiculously underappreciated sci-fi movies to recommend to you today. And what's even better is that you can stream all of them right now. From emotional drama to crazy plot twists, there is something for every sci-fi fan on this list. And I am personally a big fan of every single one of these films, so I'm really excited to share them with you. While this selection is specific to US streaming services, since that's where I'm located and where most of you are, you can still use this as an underrated gems recommendations list if you're watching from outside the country because all of these movies deserve to be seen. As always, I'm looking forward to your recommendations in the comments below, but let's get started. My first pick is for my fellow fans of Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, and if you are one of them, Little Fish is a must-watch for you. This is a beautifully devastating sci-fi-flavored drama set in a world where a mysterious virus is causing people to lose their memories. For some, it happens abruptly and all at once as we see people suddenly forget how to do what they've been doing their whole lives. For others, the process is slow, gradually causing them to lose pieces of their past until they no longer recognize anyone or anything around them. But our lead characters, Emma and Jude, aren't willing to give up easily and when one of them starts showing signs of the disease, the two try to do everything they can to preserve their memories of their life together. Little Fish is heart-wrenching in the best ways, and instead of taking any kind of global, apocalyptic impact approach, the filmmakers tell an emotional, personal story that's guaranteed to resonate with pretty much anyone. Do you have friends and loved ones who are important in your life? this movie is probably going to hit hard. Olivia Cook and Jack O'Connell are the leads and it is impossible not to feel for them. Their chemistry is undeniable, the love their characters have for one another feels so genuine, and you truly hope they can find a way to preserve the memories of their relationship and each other. It's a beautifully written, powerful film about human connection and one of the most insanely underrated and underwatched sci-fi dramas of the past few years. Now this next movie is for those of you who need more Pedro Pascal in their life, which really is all of us. I mean, who doesn't need more Pedro Pascal in their life. But as you're getting ready to grab your phone and text your friends about this movie they're clearly missing out on, ask yourself this. Is your phone well protected? What if you were to drop it, break it, and your friends would end up missing out on this exciting Pedro Pascal sci-fi movie? Thankfully, the lovely sponsor of today's video, Casetify, has got you covered. With over 2,000 designs and plenty of customization options, Casetify is the world's most popular tech accessory brand. They have been keeping phones safe for years, but their new bounce case is their most protective case yet. Those expanded corners allow your phone to simply bounce if it falls, and the EcoShock Impact Absorption technology means it will withstand a drop from up to 21 feet. And here's what's also great. The case still feels light and doesn't make my phone feel bulky, so I can still be confident it's protected without feeling like I'm carrying around a brick in my pocket. With their massive selection of design options, thanks to their artist program, you are guaranteed to find a case that matches your style and personality. I'm rocking this astronaut case, which I adore, and on top of all this, I really appreciate that these cases are made with 65% recycled and plant-based materials. So here's the deal. Right now, I have a special 15% off discount for you. Go to casetify.com slash impression blend to get 15% off your next order. I will leave that link in the info box below. Let me know what design you're going with in the comments. And thank you so much to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Now back to Pedro Pascal. The movie I'm talking about is Prospect and it takes place on a distant alien moon. A teenage girl played by Sophie Thatcher and her father travel to a remote forest moon covered in poisonous spores to mine for gems. But things take an unexpected turn and the two run into a couple of rival prospectors. The film is basically a sci-fi western, 
It's a bit of a slow burn, but in a good way. Sometimes it's a drama. Sometimes it's a story of survival and the otherworldly landscape brings potentially deadly challenges as our characters make their way through the wilderness. And speaking of that landscape, the way this film looks is already enough of a reason to watch it because this world is distinct, detailed, and memorable. I was mesmerized by it. The same goes for technology and weapons. Everything has this gorgeous retro-futuristic look and feel and those visual choices really make the movie seem timeless. The characters and dialogue feel a bit unusual as well, with the dialogue in particular having this almost literary style to it, which is something that doesn't always work in movies, but here it only adds to the otherworldly atmosphere. And while the pacing of the story itself can be a bit uneven, the other elements really bring this one together and make it work. Plus, let's not forget about Pedro Pascal. Prospect is an absolute gem. My next pick is for those of you who appreciate great but stripped down storytelling and want to see how a talented filmmaker can create a fascinating sci-fi film on a very limited budget. If that sounds like the movie for you, The Vast of Night is something you cannot miss. This is a film that really surprised me because on its surface, it doesn't sound like much. Set in a small town in the 1950s, the movie follows a young switchboard operator and a radio DJ who discover a strange frequency and begin suspecting it could be of an extraterrestrial origin. The two decide they need to figure out what's going on and turn to their listeners to seek answers. But this simple premise turned out to be a delightful throwback to classic sci-fi, feeling like an episode of The Twilight Zone and showcasing that it is possible to make an effective sci-fi film on a low budget. The movie doesn't feature any overly ambitious visuals or flashy action sequences. Instead, it's about finding creative ways to make the simplest things work. It's about maintaining a sense of mystery and suspense through storytelling that keeps the viewers glued to the screen, waiting to get the answers along with the characters. And by the time the movie ends, you just might get the urge to go outside to look up at the night sky wondering about what could be out there. The Vast of Night was actually in my top 10 movies of 2020, which was a weird movie year, but even if it wasn't, I am confident that it would remain as one of my favorites of the year. This next movie is for those of you who are craving a darker take on superpowers outside of cinematic universes. Freaks is a movie nobody went to see in 2019, but I promise you this one will make you forget all about that terrible Firestarter adaptation that came out last year. The movie is about a seven-year-old girl, Chloe, who has been kept locked up at home for as long as she can remember by her father. She is forbidden to leave because if she does, some bad men are going to kill her or at least that's what her father says. But of course, this wouldn't be much of a movie if she just stayed home. So one day, Chloe does go outside, which leads her to discovering the truth about what's going on and why she had to stay hidden all this time. While it may take about 30 minutes to really get going, Freaks makes it worth your time as the story expands with exciting world building and sci-fi horror elements. Plus, the film is actually able to keep you guessing for a while about who's bad, who's good, and who is lying. This is something you're going to have to figure out along with Chloe. At the core of it all, though, is a family story and a father-daughter relationship. A parent desperately trying to protect his young girl who is eager to experience the world and find out how she fits in. It's a thrilling and fresh take on a superpowers-based narrative that's still grounded in real human emotions and a complicated family dynamic. Now, if time travel is what you're looking for, Mirage is a great sci-fi mystery thriller from Spain. I just know that all of its twists and turns are going to keep you at the edge of your seat. During a mysterious electrical storm, a young mother, Vera, saves a person's life, but something about that evening causes a chain of unexpected and disturbing consequences. You see, Vera wakes up the next day in a different reality, 
Nobody remembers last night's storm. Her husband is no longer her husband and her daughter was never even born. What follows is a complicated journey of a woman trying to get her normal life back and this journey is full of reveals and surprises. The director and co-writer Oriol Paolo knows how to do plot twists. I have recommended one of his films before, The Invisible Guest, which is an excellent mystery thriller that's also very underrated. But with Mirage, he brings the butterfly effect into a crime thriller while also making all of this very personal, for the lead character whose life is suddenly falling apart. And the movie juggles all of these elements impressively well. I will admit not everything about the story is airtight because time travel storylines have their own unique challenges, but the film has so much going for it that its flaws are easy to overlook. Mirage is engaging, full of unexpected turns, and its strong emotional lead performance gets you completely immersed in this whirlwind of events, hoping Vera will be able to get her family back. And speaking of time travel, for my next two movies, we're going to take a trip to my beloved 90s. First up is a sci-fi horror film that did have its cult following moment, but has since faded and is unfortunately rarely talked about anymore. And I am here on a mission to bring the faculty back into the conversation. Sitting right between Invasion of the Body Snatchers and The Thing, this film puts a teen horror movie spin on a pretty classic sci-fi premise. The Faculty is about a group of high school teenagers who have to overcome their differences and together figure out a way to fight against an alien invasion. Because you see, the teachers and staff of their high school aren't acting like themselves and have been taken over by aliens. This movie has a lot going for it. First of all, it's written by Kevin Williamson, the legendary screenwriter of Scream, and you can absolutely tell. It's equal parts sci-fi and horror, but the well-placed dark humor makes it even more entertaining. Second, it features one of the most late 90s ensemble casts you can think of, including Josh Hartnett, Elijah Wood, Clea Duvall, Jon Stewart, Salma Hayek, and quite a few more familiar faces. Third, it actually aged pretty well, and the mix of practical effects and CGI keeps it looking good. And don't even get me started on the incredibly nostalgic soundtrack, which includes The Offspring, Creed, Oasis. It's a great time. It's gory, it's twisty, it's funny, it's rated R, it would never be made today, so basically, it's exactly what you want from this type of movie. My second 90s pick is a gritty cyberpunk thriller that deserves way more attention for many reasons. Strange Days is a film that needs to be seen and respected because it has been flying under the radar for far too long. Strange Days is shockingly relevant for a movie that came out and sadly bombed 28 years ago. Said during the final days of 1999, the story revolves around an ex-cop who now sells recordings on the black market which allow the user to experience the recorder's memories and physical sensations. One day, he receives a recording of a murder which leads him down a dark path as he tries to uncover the truth behind the murder. Directed by Catherine Bigelow and co-written by James Cameron, the film is an incredibly tense, bleak and gritty cyberpunk thriller that was clearly ahead of its time. I really don't think Bigelow gets enough credit for how well she can direct intense action scenes, and watching Strange Days really made me wish she would make movies more often or just direct another movie in general. Ray Fiennes is fascinating as the lead character Lenny, Angela Bassett is simply a goddess, and Michael Wincott is playing the exact type of villain you want Michael Wincott to play. It's well written, the story is engrossing, the characters are interesting, and the tight pacing is going to keep your attention from beginning to end. There are some elements of it that feel a bit dated at this point, but the action and suspense are excellent. I do have to warn you that there are some scenes of assault and murder that are pretty tough to watch, but it's still an excellent film you cannot miss 
if you're a sci-fi fan and particularly a cyberpunk fan. Sticking with the sci-fi thriller subgenre for a bit longer, I am here to remind you that Oxygen is a one location survival thriller that you have not watched yet and you are missing out. I have an entire separate review of this film on my channel, so check that out for more details, but here is why you should watch it. This is a gripping edge of your seat thriller with a very compelling lead performance. A woman wakes up in a cryogenic pod with no recollection of who she is or how she got there. She can't get out and she's running out of oxygen. With the assistance of an advanced AI, she has to figure out if she can free herself or call for help or maybe even try to get her memories back all before the oxygen level inside hits zero. Aside from being an incredibly tense survival thriller, this film also works as a puzzle because along with the lead character, played by the lovely Melanie Laurent, we, the audience, are trying to put together the pieces of information in order to figure out what's going on and how she ended up in this high-tech box. Everything about this film feels urgent and claustrophobic, and while some of the plot twists are fairly obvious, there are plenty of others that you will not see coming. What really makes this work is the emotional journey of the lead character that happens alongside the survival puzzle, and both of these elements are closely connected. Oxygen is a contained sci-fi thriller that is effective, well-paced, well-executed, it will keep you guessing, and it is definitely worth your time. For this next pick, I want to circle back to great storytelling and offer you a bit of an unusual option. If you're looking for a sci-fi experience that's almost meditative, but still delivers an incredible and powerful story, you absolutely have to watch Last and First Men. And yes, it is finally available to stream. The movie tells a thought-provoking story about the last humans living millions of years into the future who send a message to the humanity of the present. This message is an epic tale of life and evolution spanning many years that warns of things to come, but also provides a much-needed glimmer of hope. After watching it, I felt like I simultaneously had the best meditation experience of my life, guided by Tilda Swinton, and also discovered one of my favorite works of science fiction. It's definitely not going to be for everyone. It's a movie that doesn't feature any actors in it or footage of what's actually going on. The story is narrated by Tilda Swinton, set to the otherworldly music by Johan Johansson, who also directs the film, and the only footage you see are black and white images of memorial sculptures erected in the former Republic of Yugoslavia. And yet this was unlike anything I've ever watched. I found this film to be profound, stunning, creative, and endlessly fascinating. Artists contemplating human existence through their work is one of my favorite things to watch, and that is exactly what Last and First Men is. I know you're probably skeptical, and all of this sounds like it might be cold, slow, or uneventful, but it's a beautiful piece of minimalist art with a story that will truly stir your imagination. Plus, it's only 72 minutes long, so I really encourage you to give it a try. And of course, this list wouldn't possibly be complete without one of my time travel favorites, Predestination. How this film is still as underrated and overlooked as it is, I have no idea. But I hope this can be your final push to finally experience this amazing story. Predestination is one of those movies that's better if you know next to nothing about it. So let me just say this. It's a story about a temporal agent sent on a series of time travel journeys in hopes of preventing a devastating attack which will claim thousands of lives. It's based on a short story by Robert A. Heinlein titled All You Zombies, and I can confidently say that this is one of the best time travel films ever made. It may hurt your brain a bit on your first viewing, but in a good way. The film is starring Ethan Hawke and Sarah Snook, who both deliver phenomenal performances, 
And by the end of it, you're going to be just as confused as I was about why this film hasn't gained mainstream popularity. It has everything, action, drama, memorable visuals, great sci-fi aesthetics, and an absolutely insane story. It's a movie that makes paying attention to details incredibly satisfying, and while your first viewing may be fully dedicated to following the plot, your second will let you sit back and fully enjoy watching all of the pieces fall into place. If there is only one movie you end up watching from this list, and in my opinion, they're all great, but the one I have to insist on is Predestination. And that's the list. Let me know what underrated sci-fi gems have you discovered on streaming recently because I am always looking for more recommendations and the AI thinks this is the video you should check out next.